continuing the efforts of the segment of A Minute of Abbott, um, I'm going to proceed by submitting a small movie. In fact, the movie I created on introducing the entry or the, the, the first steps that you need to take to get inside Avid Composer. Uh, here I'm going to give you a rendition on having to transfer the video from that movie I created into Avid Composer. For that I need to create a bin. Now I already have a bin here but I don't I need to create one where I can transfer the video. To do that there are several ways to do that. You can do that by clicking here where it says new bin. You can do that by clicking this little uh, square that looks like a sandwich. I call it the sandwich square. Uh, if you click at that then you have the option there to get a new a new fo a new bin, a new folder, but you we're talking about new bin. And the other way to do that is by coming here to the file menu. Uh, the new bin, uh, I'm gonna do it from here. I click at that and this square comes up. This square is basically the new bin. A, a new bin is where you're going to put all your files that you're going to be working with under the name uh, subject that you created. In this case, this is going to be called a minute of Avid bin 2. And I'm going to move that here. And I'm going to position it in the same way I position everything else. So it looks all neat and nice. Now I go back where I created that video. Uh, it will be on the next segment page. It's basically this one. So what I'll do, I'll click on it and then I'll move it and transfer it into the new bin, which is this one. And then this, this video was created um, not in MP4. If it was in MP4, it would have been a quick transfer. But because it's not an MP4, it was a different format. I think it was movie, movie, um, movie video, and therefore it's a different format. So it will have to take a while before it converts it into the MP4, so that I'll be able. To okay, everybody, welcome back. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to transfer the file, which is this conversion file that uh, that I was doing. It took a little bit of a while. And I'm going to move it into this window. This window is the processor window, the, pro the production window. This is where you break uh, and cut off or do whatever you want to do to the video to then transfer it into the timeline section of the, of the program where you can work with it as well. Okay, let's move it by dragging it into the window. Uh, anyway, you have to drag it from the from the icon. You can either either do that or you can double click at the video, and it will do that. This was the beginning of it. This is how I started it. I wasn't talking at the time when this was on because I was doing preparations about the video being recorded. In this case. Um, is, this is called the screening video because I'm, I'm using the screen to record what I'm doing. Okay, now let's move a little bit forward. I can move a little bit forward until I find the section where I wanna I wanna start at. It wasn't here. It was probably here. As I keep moving, maybe I'll find the part. And the part was there. This is the media composer window. This is where I wanted to start so that you know that this is the beginning. This is where I should start. Uh, but I kind of like moved around a little bit so it, the window start is stay there for a little bit because it's, it's, it's downloading all the programs and files in order for it to work. As you can see, there is where I already began. But I want to move it back to where that window was at. So I'm going to put my my mark in. This mark in it states where the video is going to begin. I'm going to put it right where that blue line is at. So I did that. So now, if I wanted to play, it starts playing from this bracket here. All right. Now I keep playing, and I know I recorded a whole bunch of stuff when it was doing the, its conversion, and I didn't want it to stop, and I didn't want it to start. To stop the recording so I gotta search for it now. 
I can do that by keep clicking it until I find it. That was a while. I think I did that error in this one. Uh, I think the error will be in the one that I'm recording now. Nevertheless. For video formatting. So you always... For video formatting. So you always choose that. You see 23.96, which is also the same for options. This is basically the standard option. For I go back into the select. So I'm searching where I can end it. So I can what I want to do is bring this page down here. This is basically the setup that you need to have. And I'm going to call it a minute of average. I'm not making it that long. Comment and definitely subscribe. And appreciate you guys doing that. I'm going to get more involved. And I feel interested in learning this software. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful night. Um, once you put the video from here to this window, it turns into a timeline and you're going to see it pop up right away. Here we go. As soon as I press the override button. Now mind you, all these buttons you see here, they're on your keyboard. There is a silicon keyboard that they sell primarily for the program Avid Media Composer my computer has that so I don't have to memorize where all these keys are at because it tells me right on the keyboard from the silicon cover that I have every single key that is listed here you can also change it I will teach you that in other videos though so I'm gonna press the overwrite Okay, it's asking me for a middle of it too. I'm going to say OK. I transfer it, and there it is. This is basically it. This is the timeline for this video here. And when I start this timeline, wait a minute, for the beginning, that's where the media composer is at. So it's playing the video. Welcome everybody. And there it is. Welcome everybody. All right. So if I keep moving along the video, you'll see that the whole video is in there, the whole video. This is the video that I decided to use. I cut from here because there were some things that I didn't want to add up. So this is the video that I'm going to use to start doing my my um, my my video completion. But I want to add up a few more things. I want to show you something. Some of these uh, icons that you see here, some of these uh, buttons that you see here, they're basically here. These buttons are important because they move along with the timeline. For example, I want to. Uh, disable this button here so that I can use just this button I don't get confused with anything else why do I want that because I want to move a little bit this whole section of the of the movie line to do that I press shift and then I click at the video line 
to highlight the whole entire video line. And then you see how it turns it, that icon turns, the little red uh, pointer is turning on every time I, I get on the timeline. Well, that's because it's, it's about to do what I want it to do, which is move it forward. Just a few, a few sections here, because what I want to do, I want to put something in here that will introduce my video. Um, in here, I have a program called um, Titler Pro, and that's what I'm going to use to create the video. I go here to the settings sections and I go down to where it says New Blue Titler Pro. I click at that and then uh, I click at Titler Pro, which is the software program that I'm going to use to create an intro for it. I'm gonna make create. I'm gonna be creating a simple intro, and I'm not gonna be fancy about it. Uh, a simple intro will do. So I'm just gonna move here now and drag this down to this section here that is open, and just release it. When I release it, the Tyler Pro program should should come on, and there it is. And this is the program. Now I'm going to choose what it is that I want to start up the titler, the, the titler that I'm going to install before the video begins. Um, I'm going to open this arrow, this arrow gives me some sections here, and then if I look at the templates uh, from the project menu, I want to see something like uh, effects maybe, effects in animation. Uh, let's see, the store no, I don't think I like any of that. I'm gonna go with project templates. These are already self-made, and I want to see what they got. Uh, they got that. So that's really nice. Uh, they got this one. I used this one before. Uh, some of them I use them. Some of them I haven't used them. I created on my own. But uh, it's always nice to know that you have other abilities in using uh, other programs that you can create. So I think I want to use that one for today. I want to use that one. Let's see this one, reload, locking, and no. I like this one. I'm going to use that one. So I'm going to call it what I actually called it in the first place, a minute of avid. Okay. A minute of avid and at the bottom I'm going to put what the segment was about for that video that I created and that video was what was that video called that project video was called The segment was called New Project. It was called New Project Yeah, that's what it was called. It was called New Project, but I'm gonna call it New Project Intro. All right, I'm gonna leave it at that, and then I'm going to save it. Uh, saving it is pretty easy. There are several ways to do that. You can do that by uh, going to your new uh, to file from the new blue Tyler and choose uh, save, so save as. But I actually like to do it like this. I click at the at the uh, X button to close down the program, and then I keep it. I don't discard it. I keep it. When I keep it, it does its re its uh, saving, and it transfers directly into the empty section that I chose. So when I play it, 
Oh, that's that's not the beginning. The beginning is here. Let's see. See how it is? Just playing it. Have it. A minute of avid, but it's too it's too short. I didn't extend it. I should have extended it a little more, but I don't want it to extend it and stay there for a long time. So what I'll do, I'll shorten it. I'll shorten it by stretching it a little bit more and see where it ends. This ends right. It ends right there, you see that? So now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to click this section here, and I'm going to move it inward. To do that, I have to disable this one, and then enable this one, so I can bring it backwards. And now I click on it. Welcome everybody. I wanted to show you the intro to a software that I have. Which is called okay, Avid Media So Culture. now it's right there. I'm I don't know what's going on. Some recording on, this thing, so cool. uh, on Avid. Thank you so much for about a minute introducing you to um, segments in the Avid Media Composer, which mm -hmm. will help. I won't make it long, so I'm gonna call it a minute of avid. Alright, so I found what the problem was. Alright, so check it out. Now I go back to again to this section line and I'm gonna choose all of them at one time again by disabling this one and enabling this one. And now I can pick the three of them, and now I can move the whole section right close to the Tyler Pro as an intro. I have to be very close. Right there, that's good. And now I play. You see that? And it starts. Welcome, everybody. I wanted to show you the intro to a software that I have. Which is called Avid Media Composer. I'm gonna be doing some recording. Alright, so now you see. But I'm not done with it yet. I wanna add up a song to it. Um, so that it, it kind of blends uh, with the audio and it doesn't sound so boring. I may have a monotone voice sometimes. Uh, primarily because um, I don't record, I, I rarely record um, uh, doing a, doing a, um, you know, doing self, doing self recording, but um, I rarely record with my voice. I usually just kind of show uh, the product and then just talk a little bit about the product but lately I've been doing a lot of voice recording and I wanna and I wanna practice more on that all right so I don't wanna leave this empty uh, just by itself I wanna add up something else so what I wanna add is a voice uh, a type of audio in it so I go to I believe I go to um, timeline and then I choose audio track. When I do that, the, uh, the timeline is gonna open a track for me at the bottom of it because that's where the audios go. And I'm gonna choose mono. And there it is. It gives me the timeline. Now all I have to do is go look for a song that I like. And we'll see, I have several here that are, that are not copyrighted. Uh, so I don't like to get in trouble with YouTube and so I like to install one from here and see which one I like I don't like it I just want to open it from here no 
I need something new. No. Choose that one. And it won't close. I I never tell them to stay there, but somehow it comes back and it stays there. So nevertheless, I I want Jericho, and I'm gonna go and transfer into my uh, my bin section. When I do that, it's going to convert really, really quickly because it's audio. And all I have to do is drag the audio and pass it onto my timeline, which is right here. Actually, I'm going to put it right in the beginning. Right there. But maybe I'm still overlapping somehow, so I'm going to... Yeah, there you go. I was overlapping. I'm going to move it just a bit more. That's good. And now I'm gonna I'm gonna bring a little fall right there, and I'm gonna open the audio tracking because I'm going to do some leveling on the on the on the music. To do that, you go to track. Uh, what should I say? Audio, and then you gotta open up the waveform. Did you see that here? You see the waveform here now, and then you go back again to uh, audio, audio data, and go and open up the volume. The volume will allow you to uh, to enter some uh, keyframes so that you can level the audio. I want to start leveling the audio almost at the beginning of my intro when my voice starts. Usually, I let this level to stay like that because that's the intro to the to the video. But right about here, this is where I. I like to put my keyframes right about there. A little more, maybe. A little more. What happened to that? There it is. Right about there, because that's where that icon disappeared. The the media, I, the Avid Media Composer icon. And so I figure I leave it right there, and I put my first keyframe by pressing uh, the button that's right next to the L button. And boom, there it is. That's the first one. The second one is gonna go just a bit off, and I'm gonna highlight the audio because if I don't highlight the audio, it will put keyframes on all uh, the line, the timelines, the video and the audio. So I leave it like that, and I go in and put the keyframe, which is right next to the L button. Boom, and now I have it. At this point, I want to choose the level of the audio that is going to take place while I'm talking. I don't want it to be too loud because, well, people need to hear me and if the music is too loud, they can't hear me. So I need to bring it down and that's what I'm about to do. When that turns into a little finger, I bring it down. I usually, I don't know if you can see, I'll show you, if you can see this right here, this untitled is going to turn into a number framing. For the audio and I usually put it at 34 at 34.7 there that's usually the the, the keyframe that makes me sound uh, it makes me people hear my voice and they hear the music in the background somehow now boom so let's see what happens let's see how it turns out Welcome everybody. So you see, I wanted to show you the you can intro. Hear my voice, but you can also the hear software that I have. The music in the background, which is called Avid Media Composer. I'm gonna be doing some recording uh, on Avid for 
about about a minute introducing you to me. Needs to be always 1080p slash. Needs to be always 1080p slash. The way you said. So okay, so now that's good. I like that. But now you see that gap. I have all that gap to fill up. And why do I need to fill it up? Because, well, when I start talking here, there will be no music. If I put it right here, look. First, there's no music. So I need to add up some music. So the way I do it, I don't have to go back and do everything all over again. I like the level of, the level of, um, uh, the level of the music, the volume of the music that I've already pre-recorded. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut starting from here I'm gonna cut it by using uh, the add editor and I cut boom right there and now you'll see the cut but apparently it cuts everything but it doesn't matter because you're not gonna take this section here you're just gonna take this section here so the next part I want to cut is this part and I'm gonna cut it right about there that's where it ends and I'm going to cut it again. And boom, I cut it again. So now I want to highlight these two parts here so that I can copy it. I copy it here and now I'm going to move it. What did I do? I'm going to move it right here. Right in the slot here. Right here. And to do that, I'm going to highlight it first and I'm going to uh, paste it. Boom. And I pasted it. And it's not quite even. That's because I wanted to actually remove these ones where I cut. And I want to show you more closely. You see these little part, these little things right here? I wanted to cut them. To do that, I highlight them and I press the delete key. The first time it's not going to work because there are two sections that you need to delete. But the second time, boom, it will delete them. While I did that, now I want to highlight this ones. And I want to uh, close them up the way I did with the other ones. And that's good. So that means when I'm talking, it's not gonna, you're not going to hear any difference. Of course, you have other options, but you need to you will not focusing on the music you're focusing on my voice so that's why it should be all right now I think at this point I'm kind of done but we need to cut the last section to see how it went to see how it is doing and look, I, it, it kind of completed itself. But let's go. Let's go all the way to the end. See how it looks. I'm going to use the... There it is. So, if it's like that, what I can do to make it sound nice while I'm talking you know, like I'm talking. I'm done right here, but I'm going to create another key frame right about, uh, say, here. I'm going to create a key frame, boom. And then another key frame right about here, and boom. And now I'm going to lower it all the way down to zero, I guess, because I have no need for it. Remember, once I'm done with it, this is the end of the video and so this audio right here doesn't need to go for long so I'm gonna go all the way down to zero right there and I'll do the same thing for the second level all right so that's that so that's done all right so that's done so once that's done I'm gonna go ahead and cut 
Boom. And then I'm gonna highlight and I'm gonna delete. Highlight again and delete. So when it goes down, it's gonna down easy and slow. Like that, see that? And that will be the end of that. Now, there, once I'm, I'm practically done here. Let's see, let's go to the beginning. I'm practically done here. But now we need to export. There will be another section that I will be using for exporting uh, because I need to break it down to what it does and what it is. So for now, I want to do it real quick so you can see real quick how it's done. Let me make sure how my video looks first. Welcome everybody. All right, so we're good. Now, I wanted to I'm going to put the timeline line all the way to the beginning. Then I'm going to go to the um to the fraction uh, section of the box um and I put two fingers, I you want two fingers so I can break down the menu and I go down to export. Now export is a very complicated section that needs to be reviewed. Now do a, a video about that. But for now, all you need to know is that everything is already um set up. I did the setup, which is something that you need to know before you go ahead and export your video. Because if you export your video and you haven't done your setup, your video is going to come out all wrong. The, 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 the audio, it will be coming out differently, either forward or backwards. You really have to get into the export options in options in order for you to, in order for you to come out with a good video. Uh, I recommend you watch my video when I make it. Um, but for now, this is just simple because I already created or set up my export. So all I have to do is pick where I want this to go. I want this to go to the desktop. And then I save. And boom, it starts doing its, its exporting. From here on, once the video is done, all I have to do is, um, well, it does it automatically. The software sends it directly into YouTube and it starts converting it. Uh, so it's done automatically, but you can also do it manually. I'm saving it into desktop, so this way when it's done, I don't need to have the video because it will create more space in my computer. So I usually delete the videos and I leave the ones in YouTube active. Um, for now, thank you for watching my, my, uh, my channel. I really appreciate you stuck around with me for a little bit. Um, and I want you to continue watching my videos and please subscribe, make comments, okay? Um, turn on your bell so you can start uh, we see some of my uh, videos as soon as I make them and help me please help me build up this channel I'm putting a lot more time and effort um, doing this so please uh, help me out I really will appreciate you guys have been sticking around and you're not a, a whole bunch of my numbers are not that big they're 300 uh, and 18 I think right now they're not that big but please support me whoever you are uh, and I'll come out with better videos. Uh, if you like me bringing Avid Composer into your homes, I'll do more videos about that. If you have ideas of what you think I may be talking about or should I be talking about, also put that in the comments. I would like to know what you guys think. Thank you so much. Again, uh, thank you for all your help and all your uh, watching my videos. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful night.